talking about this idea of your coaching superpower. Like, yes, you have to have a very specific avatar, um, but you also have to, and you have to have a very specific outcome that you're going to deliver, but you need to give the, and I think um, Laurel calls it unique mechanism. I call it coaching superpower. It's your, you know, what distinct perspective, talent, or experience or process. Uh, I know Laurel sometimes calls it signature framework as well, but you have to be able to identify for yourself before you create an offer, how is it that you are the best in the world at what you do? How is it that you are the only choice for that right person to get the result that they want as effectively and efficiently as possible? And now on this thread in on my social media profiles, there were, and some of you here responded to that. And I'm not, if I, if I say something that sounds like what you said, I'm not throwing rocks or making fun of anybody. I'm just, this is like typical stuff that I have been very guilty of. I was a coach that wanted to coach everybody. And during that time, I coached nobody. I was a coach that wanted to get people from where they are to where they wanted to be. And nobody knew what the hell that, that meant. I was a coach whose superpower was, I'm a good listener. I, um, I hold safe space. Those kind of things that we almost always begin our coaching practice building around, that's table stakes. Every great coach, every good coach, every mediocre coach knows how to be an active listener, knows how to hold space, knows how to ask probing questions. That's table stakes. stakes. I'm asking you to think about what what is the specific idiosyncratic talent perspective or approach that you possess that puts you in a category of one? There's lots of people that are coaching coaches like me, but there's not very many that are going to not just ask you a great question, but are going to get under your skin and make you do the next best thing that you need to do to get to the result that you want to get. I call it empathetic antagonism. What does that mean? Well, there we go. We just started a conversation. So what is that thing? How about you, Laurel? What's, what do you think? Uh, how, how would you define your superpower? $5 ads, honestly. Like, you know, we're talking about, you know, finding out people's superpower. I think like finding your superpower too is as important as also identifying the gap that's in the marketplace and utilizing your superpower to fill that, right? Like $5 ads aren't really necessarily something new, but at the time that I came out with this strategy, everyone was telling everyone that they have to spend all of these thousands of dollars, right? But my superpower from television was launching these $5 ads. And so that's why a lot of, I, I believe, but you see how like, I didn't just make myself known for Facebook ads. I would have been a dime a dozen as a Facebook ads expert, right? I went even deeper and I went all in on this $5 ads concept that I call power content, right? Um, that's what you need. That's what you need to dig into is like, what is my superpower and what gap in the marketplace can I, can this like superpower really stand out? 